Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Wednesday. I almost said Thursday because it seems like it should be a Thursday, um, but it's Wednesday. I don't know why it feels like Christmas was on, wow, my hat's sticking way up. It feels like Christmas was on a Wednesday, but it was on, Christmas Eve was Monday and Christmas was Tuesday, which makes today Wednesday, so sorry about the pause there, <laughs> but you're used to it. Why does this hat look so high? I guess it is kind of high. Um, anyway, I am so, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so amped. I'm so on fire about so much stuff. And for those of you that are going to ask any second, how much coffee have you had this morning? I've still only had one little cup of coffee. In fact, I just refilled my second one. And I think I just want to point out to most of you that, um, it is never, it's never been as much as I truly, as we all know love my Diet Coke. I could drink diet soda all day long. I, if, if somebody, if, if <sighs> I try to not have diet soda, um, but I enjoy it and I'm just putting it out there. I enjoy it. I like it. You can give me all of the things that you want. Like, do you know that when you put that in a car, it melts the tires or whatever? I don't even care. Okay. We all have certain things that we do. I also go tanning. So shoot me. Okay, we have to have some kind of advice. Maybe some of you don't. God bless you. Okay, so I like diet soda and I like caffeine, but I really do not have as much caffeine as one would think. Um, I usually will only have one cup of coffee and I treasure it. But that's just because I like the taste. It's really not, I have never in my life ever, as much as I love having my coffee in the morning, there have been times and if you guys have been watching my, my videos for a while, God bless you. Uh, but if you've been watching, you know that there have been time periods where I've just totally cut coffee out and I don't have it. Wow, God, this is that Under Armour sports bra. I've just, it feels like the boobs are up here. They sure lift, don't they? Um, <laughs> I really, Under Armour bras are the best bras, sports bras, if you have boobs, which clearly I have no shortage in that department, thanks to my mother. Anyway. There have been many times where I have totally cut out coffee in the morning and I'm just as peppy. So I'm just putting that out there because some people think that I'm peppy and excited and it's just my DNA. That's just the way I am. I'm, I'm happy, I'm excited whether I've had no caffeine or a lot of caffeine. Oh, that's some good stuff. But I have so much, but I'm only going with one theme. And you want to know what the theme is for today? This is your theme that I wrote on a piece of paper that is used, which I'll explain. I don't really need to explain that. I think it's just actually a funny tendency that both my brother and my sister and I have, and my dad has, um, that we, we take notes on, we use paper um, and, and we'll use and reuse paper and not waste it. And I think it's something that we inherited from my grandparents on my dad's side. I find it interesting, the things that pass down through generations that you don't even realize you do. Um, but I've just noticed that we all have this thing, like if I print out something, um, you know, I don't print out a lot of stuff, but if I print it and it's an article or something and I'm referencing it, or if I'm working on a proposal for a client and I print it out because I need to see something while I'm working on it, and I'm all about using the Sharpie to cross things off like when I've done it, okay, I've got that in there, I've got that in there, whatever. If I've used that piece of paper, if it's got Sharpie on it, I'm not gonna reuse it. But I usually will like flip that over and I save all of that paper and then I put it in a, in a file cabinet and then I use that for my scrap paper. It's just this thing about, you know, using paper. And so this is stuff I was taking out of my notebook here and it had been written on and, um, Rather than throw it all away, I'm going to use, <laughs> well, I can only use one because most of these are, but I'm at least using this last piece of paper to write down my one and only topic for today, which of course, we're already four minutes into my vlog and I have yet to get to the topic, but it wouldn't be a Kelly O vlog without a lot of incessant rambling, would it? <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get to that in one second because that's our only topic, but it's very I think important. It's something that's helping me and I know it's going to help a lot of you. And wow, the birds are crazy today. But anyway, started my morning off. I'm being prepared. This is what I do every morning, you guys, um, so that you get, you put 
things into place that help you do what you need to do, okay? So I need to take my vitamins, I need to take my supplements, and the best way for me is that when I come into my kitchen in the morning, I start making my coffee and then I take out all my goodies. So I put into a little, I'll sit bullet, um, ramekin. Um, this is one leftover, it's um, my probiotics. So I've got my probiotics, I've got my two packets of Genetics HD Physio Burn in here. I've got my Vitapack, smelly Vitapack. Um, so those are the vitamins I take, and then at night I take, um, like before I'm getting ready to go to bed, I, I take my prescription, my um, anti-androgen spironolactone that I take, and then I take my, um, it's a zinc magnesium aspartate, which is supposed to help with muscle repair, but it's also supposed to help with sleep. Um, so I take that, and I'm not lying, I also take like Advil PM to go to sleep. Don't judge me, I can't sleep lately. I have a lot going on. And then I also set out my uh, ProSculpt, which Kelly, I'm almost out of, and a shaker bottle. So I've got that all ready for when I go for my workout. I don't have my um, BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. I don't have that out, but I usually take that when I leave for the gym. Today is leg day. So we're definitely going to need that. Um, <laughs> I also have this out because I'm going to buy more. A microcell. I cannot believe. But I'm going to show this to you again, okay? Um, do you see the pictures of the vegetables on here? I was mortified when microcell told me that I should take Beano. But I told him, do you see that there's a piece of broccoli on there? Certain vegetables have undigestible carbohydrates in them, which gives people bloating, which could also be interpreted as gas. I don't like that word because it sounds awkward. But I have not been able to eat cauliflower or broccoli because I would eat it and be walking around like a pregnant woman with bloating. So now you take this right before. I thought it was weird. I thought it was going to be something like Prilosec, you know, like whatever. Stuff works. I can now have broccoli and cauliflower. You take it right before you eat it, and I'm very happy about it. But I was a little disturbed. I bought this at Walmart. There were like six pieces in here. Oh, 15. What's up with 15? Give me a big bottle. I don't like going to the store. I'm over that. That is a negative comment, and I'm over it. We're working. Mike's working on my mental state of mind. But positive thoughts. But, not but. Um, here's what I wanted to talk to you guys about with this why. Because you know that song by Beyonce, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. I'm not going to sing it for you because I suck at singing. But I'd like you to think about the theme of that song and saying, if you hate it, then you, should, you need to put a name on it. So instead of, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. I want you to think about, if you hate it, then you need to put a name on it. And putting a name on it is really what this why thing is all about. Now, at eight minutes into my vlog, I'm just getting to the point. That's probably epic. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. A lot of what I've been talking to you guys about is if you're really gonna make change in your life, you have to really be willing. It doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you have five pounds to lose, if you've got 50 pounds to lose, 100 pounds to lose, more than 100 pounds to lose, if you're just looking at different goals, whatever it is, wherever you are, okay? If you are just starting, or if you are like me and maybe you've, you've had the intentions, you've been working at things or working towards a goal for a while and you've been at a plateau for a while and you're frustrated, you know, whether you're just starting or you're frustrated, maybe you've just had a baby and you're like, oh, how am I gonna get my body back? Wherever you are, you have to, in order to do this um, and, and make it a long lasting, successful operation, permanent change, Okay, then you've really got to be willing to look at yourself objectively. And I mean, you have to like say some really harsh things about yourself. Okay, if you're in denial and you're like, oh no, I really don't need a lot and I'm really working out. Okay, you're not going to get anywhere because, okay, let's look at me for example, right? If I was sitting here and, and being delusional with you guys and going, really, I have no idea. I have no idea. There is absolutely no reason I've done everything perfect this year. I clearly, I don't understand why I haven't lost any weight. I, that's a lie, okay? That would be a lie if I said that because I know exactly what I haven't done this year. I'm able to look at myself and look at different time periods. You know, I can remember certain trips. I know exactly, you know, Sure, I packed all my stuff. I packed my bow slides, I packed my bands, I packed my TRX. How many times did I use it? You know, 
Intentions aren't gonna get you anywhere. If you buy a gym membership and don't use it, it's not gonna get you anywhere. You can't sit there and buy yourself a gym membership and go, hmm, I still haven't lost any weight. I don't understand, I bought a gym membership. You have to go do the work and you've got to be willing to look at yourself and figure out how you got here, in my opinion. Maybe you don't wanna do that, but I certainly find that it's helpful because I think all of us have a lot of like mental. The mental stuff is what keeps us from achieving what we want more so than our physical capabilities or whether we have a gym membership or not or how much money we have, okay? Because let's get real, people. If you wanna get fit, there are people that get fit, they don't have a gym membership, they don't have any fun workout clothes, they don't have heart rate monitors, they don't have an iPod, they don't have anything fancy, they don't have a trainer, and they can be some of the most fit people on the planet, okay? It, it's not a, a measure, you know, a, a predictor of your success. It's not how much money you have or where you are or whatever. It's all up here, okay? And, and the more that you can be willing to be honest with yourself and see things that have held you back, this also translates to real life people, okay? It translates to relationships, it translates to business, it translates to everything, okay? I have made so much progress this year in, in seeing myself and seeing my, my weaknesses and seeing areas where I'm like, damn, you know? And one of the things with this whole why thing I'm talking about is I'm able to and I've especially been able to see it the past couple of months is like why why have I been so bad about this why am I why have I not done the work when when I so want it so bad why have I like sometimes it's that that's what you know we all pay therapists for right it is figuring out why we've done things because once you really figure that out it's like with me when I had my body, my body just abruptly changed with perimenopause, right? I was hot all the time, I gained weight, I had this weird skin condition on my shoulders and my back, and you know, it was just freaky, and I was sweating all the time, and, and I couldn't, you know, the deodorant I'd used my entire life wouldn't work anymore. I had all these changes, and, and I'm like, what's going on? It, I had to go to a doctor for two years, two years of going to two different men doctors who couldn't figure it out. And then I finally went to a woman doctor who's a dermatologist. She figured it out. But what a relief it was to at least know what the problem was because then she was able to give me the right medicine. And yes, in this case, it's it's a pill that I take that is, I don't know what it does. The guy was telling me like balances the testosterone or something in my body. You've got to be able to figure out the source of the problem. Before I founded, well actually it was it was after I founded Fitfluential. Product placement. <laughs> this is the Viewsport top, by the way. Um, after I founded the, the company, Fitfluential, it was, um, I founded it in April 2011. And in August of that year, maybe it was July, I went on a vacation to Miami, where I'm going in about a month or so to visit my friend Kelly. And I was down there and I was still working my job and I was still at my old house, um, stuck you know, in a house that I hated, with a job that I hated, and mortgage I couldn't stand paying, and neighbors that made my life miserable, and I was just this whiny, moany bitch. And I, I was just tired of being whiny, moany, bitchy. And, and I remember having these conversations with Kelly, and it was Kelly that first started to say why to me, because she's like, I would sit down and start talking and I'm like, I'm just so stressed, I'm so stressed about this. And, and she would go, well, why? Why are you so stressed? And she, you know, she started to have this conversation with me that, that allowed me to see things about my job and my life in a totally different way. Because I hadn't done that, because I wasn't going, you know, okay, you're upset about this, but what makes you upset about this? It's really this which is caused by this, which is caused by this. So if you got rid of this, this would make this better, which would make this better, which means that you could do this. And it's, it's a domino effect. And that can happen in so many other areas, right? With her, she was like, you know, Kelly, it's not really your, your job that's stressful about you. You're stressed about your job. You know, she was just listening. She goes, you're stressed about your job because you know that you have to pay this mortgage because your mortgage is almost $2,000 a month. And she's like, you're, you've got to, you feel like you've got to keep this job that you really don't like and you don't feel like you fit in, but you feel like you've got to keep it or some job of like that, of like manner or like pay because you need to be able to pay your mortgage. 
and you hate paying this mortgage because it's so expensive and because like most of this country you're upside down on your mortgage you know i bought my place for like two hundred thousand, and <laughs> it's obscene what the the, the comped um real estate values were in my neighborhood after four years i think i bought my condo for like it was like 189 or 200 and at, at that time we did a, a property assessment around that area and they were going for seventy five thousand dollars i'm not even lying to you so here i was looking at how much money i was paying and and what my house was worth and what i would like realizing that here you are just pissing money out the out the window never you're gonna never gonna be able to get that back um, and, and then I'm miserable. I mean, you guys that watch my videos knew that I could never sleep. I was sleeping on the couch all the time because my neighbors were so loud. I was miserable all the time. She's like, you know, okay, so what if, what if you could get out of your house? Let's just for, you know, she goes, what if you could get out of being at that house? What would happen? And I was like, honestly, and I remember I said to her, I go, honest to God, I would quit my job and I would get a job at Starbucks so that I could, or I'd go personal training at the gym. So I'd have quality of life. I don't need a lot of money. I'd rent a smaller place and then I could work on building this business. She's like, why don't you go home and start looking at how you can sell your house? And I was like, never thought about it that way. But she kept asking why, like, why is it, you know, and, and, and is it really the job that you're so obsessed about is it, or upset about? Is it really, you know, your boss, does your boss really hate you or is it just really you? Like why? She kept asking why, why, why? And all of that helped me make changes and decisions. And I went home and started taking action because I figured it out instead of just sitting and be moaning and, and complaining. Okay. Same thing with, with your fitness. Okay. It doesn't make me happy to go, oh, this is so cool. I really wanted to work out and do all this stuff and I really talked about it and I had all the best of intentions, but I didn't do it. Why? Because I never sat down and planned it out and made time for it. And this is where I'm gonna have to say, I, you'll forgive me because I don't know if I shot a video on Monday. I don't think I did. Monday was Christmas Eve. I'm catching up with shooting my videos and posting them and getting them caught up on my blog. Um, but that's because I'm catching up on, on my schedule. Here's the thing. Dr. Mike told me, because every, every week we do um, a consultation and we go over what I ate, what my compliance was, what my challenges were, whatever. And when I talked to him late last week, he was like, I need you to write down every single day what your plan is. And I'm like, why do I need to do that? And he's like, because you do. And, and now I'm realizing why. Because if it's something like, you know, a doctor's appointment that I have to go out. If I don't look in advance and say, okay, here's what Monday looks like. Here's where I have to be. Here's when I have to leave. Here's what I'm going to need to do. And based on that, let's make sure I've got some turkey meatloaf made. Let's make sure I've got this made. Let's make sure I lay out my vitamins on the counter. Let's make sure that I have my water so I'm hydrated. Whatever it is that I can do so that it's like this effortless thing, okay? I had to figure that out about myself. I had to be hard with myself and realize I haven't done any planning. I talk about planning and I've talked about a lot of stuff and oh, I'm gonna do this and then I don't. And you have to be harsh with yourself and realize sometimes, you know, with me, yeah, it's taken seeing things really clearly and it's also taken me. I'm fortunate to have um, Mike and Todd kind of, and, and God bless you, Carla, you know, texting me and Michael, Michael um, texting me every day going, are you doing this or are you doing this or are you doing this? Because they know it's important to me. But the why thing, you guys, it can be something so small, but if you just are willing to admit to yourself that this is a weakness of yours, that this is something you've given into in the past, the more that you allow yourself to recognize what you've been sucktastic at, the more that you can actually change it. Okay, until you, it's it maybe look at this like alcoholics go through this. They have to get to that point where they admit that they're an alcoholic. With with fitness, okay, you have to be willing. I have to be willing to look at the last two and a half, three years of this whole like hormonal imbalance and me going through all of these changes and there's just been up and down and inconsistency. I have to be willing and it's it's getting easier for me to admit it with you guys. Like, if you would have asked me two and a half years ago, I would never tell you how much weight I had to lose. I would never tell you how often I didn't work out because it was too embarrassed, it was too prideful. And 
that keeps me from making progress. Okay, get over it. We all have issues. We all have things that we have to change. And the more that you can be honest with yourself and go, look, here's my problem. This has been my problem and now I know what it is and I'm putting it out there and I'm gonna fix it. And it's not gonna be a problem anymore. I think that's a huge opportunity. I was working out yesterday and I worked out at my house. Um, dang, I'm already at 20 minutes. Worked out at my house. Maybe I'll do why part two, because of course I've gone 20 minutes. But anyway, I was doing um, kickboxing at my house. I didn't have time to go to the gym. It was um, Christmas Day and I had to be at my parents. But I got my workout in and I planned out my day and I did um, a kickboxing DVD here at home. And as I was doing my kickboxing, there was this, this point in time where you do like a, a deep squat, a deep squat into a, a front kick. And it's this combination actually of like side squat and then you lift your leg up, side squat and then you twist side squat, front kicks, uh, side squat, reverse kick, whatever. Anyway, all that said, when I, when I go down like that and I'm, and I'm bending down, I will tell you, like deep squat, whatever the move is, that's when I can feel the fat on my stomach because when you bend over, right, that's when that tummy fat sticks out. I'm just being honest with you guys. In the past, that would piss me off so much when I would do that workout that I wouldn't do the workout because I didn't want to feel that. How stupid is that? That's the dumbest thing on the planet. I'm just telling you, that's what I did. When Val was asking like, why is your core so weak? And I'm like, I, I know that I have avoided doing, and that's such a dumb thing. But if the more that you can put it out there and go, God, that's stupid, you won't do it anymore. I avoided doing core work because I had gained weight in my core and I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to look down at my stomach that has been flat my entire life. If I gained weight, I never gained it in my, my core, ever. I gained it on my butt and my thighs and my legs um, and my boobs. And I think I'm getting a package, so I'm gonna have to go. But the more that you can recognize stupid stuff that you've done, the more that you can just fix it. Let me just tell you, do you think anymore I'm gonna not work out because, oh, I don't like to feel my stomach or I'm worried that somebody might see that I have fat on my stomach? Guess what? I just put it out there and the whole world knows. <laughs> They probably have known all this time all along. And guess what? That's what I'm working on. I am not doing, I'm getting a package from FedEx, so I have to go. We're not doing stupid shit anymore. Excuse my French for saying a swear word. I think he might just be leaving, so then I don't have to sign it. Bye. Kind of cute. Um, anyway, I have to go. Figure out your why. Ask yourself your why a lot. When, when, you, when you don't want to go to the gym, and you're frustrated and you find yourself going, I don't wanna to go to the gym. Ask yourself why. Are you going to the gym because you feel too fat and you don't like how you look? Go to the gym because guess what? I would bet 90% of the people that are there and I don't care how much they weigh. Don't look at people that are the fittest people in the world and think that they don't have as many issues. Everybody has hangups, everybody has issues. You need to get over it, okay? There are some people and, and maybe you don't think it's a problem, I know we have some of these people that, that are friends of ours. There are some people that are recovering from eating disorders. They're trying to gain weight and they're, they're having just as many issues, you know, conquering their past of not eating and, and trying to gain weight. And people look at them because they're so bony and skinny and they get made fun of for that. Okay. So there's just as, there's, there's as many different people with different problems of all ranges. Get over it, figure out your whys, and then then you can deal with it, then you can conquer it. The more that you keep pushing it back there and going, oh, I don't have that problem, I don't have that problem, there's nothing wrong, I don't, I'm not gonna talk about it. You're never gonna get anywhere. And trust me, because I've been doing it and I'm not doing it anymore. So 23 minutes of me just babbling on, I thought this was gonna be 10 minutes, but I was so excited because it's helping me and it's gonna hopefully help you guys. Now I'm off to do legs and have a kick-ass day and I'll talk to you tomorrow, bye. <laughs>